Welcome to worship. Today is Sunday, May 10th, 2020. And on behalf of St. John's Wardsville and Glencoe Presbyterian Churches, we pray that this will be a time that you are renewed and blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ and that you find much peace in our time of worship together. Now for some community news and uh, some announcements. First of all, Happy Mother's Day to all of the women out there and also a Happy Mother's Day uh, to those of you who are mentors to people in our community and at large. Together we can overcome by the Southwest Middlesex Community Support Committee. The Glencoe Ministerial uh, and Southwest Middlesex Municipality, St. Vincent de Paul Food Bank, and the Regeneration Center have partnered to provide our community with support uh, via a phone line, and that phone number is 519-930-1012. Coming from First Chronicles 16, and you'll see on the screen that this is uh, there's a drawing at the top, and this is my nephew Sam who drew this for his homework for school. And so the passage that he focuses on is, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. As we come, let us worship God. Let us join our hearts and our voices. I hope you'll enjoy this first piece of music and it is repetitive so you will be able to join in at some point if you'd like to as you're listening but just before we do that I'd like to invite you to think of all of the images that come to your mind when you think of the perfect mom now think of your mom think of if you are a mom what you are like can you smell your mom's favorite perfume? The baked apple pie or cookies, the roast chicken in the oven. So you see her at your recital, perhaps? Or cheering from the sidelines or stands? Is she wearing her work uniform or sipping on a cup of tea or coffee? Is she strong and throwing hay bales or delicately painting her nails or applying her makeup? Is she smiling or praying, laughing or crying, running toward you or driving away down the road? Where is your mother's favorite place to be, past or present? And where do you like to go to think about her and to feel close to her when you cannot be near her? For obvious reasons of social distancing, work commitments or geography, perhaps she has passed away and returned home to our Lord. How do you draw close to your mother, your mom, your Mimi, your mumsy, your mama, your ma, your mentor, and perhaps friend, best friend? Today, remember your mother and give thanks.
Let us join our hearts and let us pray. Gracious God, for the gift of this new day and this time of worship, we thank you. As we live out our faith each day, we can easily become consumed with many tasks on our to-do list, only to find out that we have pushed you down our list of priorities. On this Sabbath day, we ask that your word and this time together would renew our spirits, strengthen our faith, and give us guidance in how we live and serve others. O God of mercy, it is hard to face the truth about ourselves. We stand before you and admit that we push you away whenever it suits us. We are sorry, Lord. We are sorry that we minimize your claim upon us and we hold ourselves, not you, at the center of our lives. Come to us with your saving grace, holy God. Bend our stubborn wills back to you and give us faith to see the depth of your love for us in Jesus Christ. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we give thanks for our mothers, we give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Hear and receive the good news, friends. You are given the sight of faith. You are released and set free from all that would hold you captive. You are forgiven by the death and resurrection of Jesus, our risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Remember the words of Jesus, our Lord, for he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. As we come before God, let us share our offering with him. I encourage you to give to the charity of your choice, your uh, beloved church, or however you are able to give and support those around you. Let us come before God in prayer. Gracious God, we give you but your own. Everything we have comes from you. Every impulse to love one another comes because you first loved us. Send your spirit to make us ever mindful of this, we pray. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Jesus, the way to the Father. Let us hear God speak to our hearts. Jesus says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you. This so that you will also be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. No, we don't, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, I have been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work You have seen me do. 
I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Thanks be to God for his holy and everlasting word. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Well, the first words that Jesus says in this passage are, do not let your hearts be troubled. And these are words that we often hear uh, read at uh, a funeral, and that might be of a loved one or a friend. And we find great comfort knowing that uh, Jesus goes ahead to prepare a place for us. And we think of that physical place. We think of a mansion, a house with many rooms. And if it were not so, he would have told us. But there's also another message here too. But we have to go back a little bit into chapter 13 and consider what was happening at the beginning of this conversation. And what we find out is actually that Jesus was predicting Peter's denial. And so Peter, he has a question for Jesus and he says, Lord, where are you going? And Lord, why can't I follow you? Now, I will lay down my life for you. And Peter didn't really know what he was saying. We often make commitments to people and then suddenly uh, we break them. And interestingly though, Jesus answers Peter right away and he says, will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter was taken aback by this. He was confused. Now, if we were to continue reading, we would hear that Jesus would say this, and he would say, I tell you the truth, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. You will disown me three times. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Believe in God, believe also in me. So he's saying, I've got you. I've got your back. You're going to be okay. Even in the midst of sin and what we would say, how could Jesus ever, ever allow Peter back into his fold? And these words, if you uh, recognize them, then you might find great comfort when you hear them read at a funeral. But I want to invite you to think just a little bit deeper where these words go. They cut to the heart. They're about your heart and my heart connecting with Jesus. They're intimate words. They're words about abiding and living in Christ, in that place, in his heart. And if you can, and can imagine yourself doing a jigsaw puzzle and You've got 500 or 1,000 pieces and you have the last piece to put to complete the picture. And you can't wait to get it done. You've worked on this so hard and now the picture is nearly complete. And suddenly, you're missing one piece. One piece. Where could it be? Finally, after days of looking, you find it. And you inter put that piece into those interlocking parts and suddenly it's complete. And that is the heart that Jesus prepares for us inside of us to meet him in heaven. That home is our heart. And he offers words to the disciples and to us not as Jesus offering us himself as a security blanket, 
or to cover up our grief or our sorrow and our struggles. Rather, Jesus calls, uses words and calls us home. Home to rest and live eternally. And again, as much as I love that image of being hugged as an infant, we can, we can imagine Jesus doing that with us, but even deeper, as we are called to abide in him, to connect and to talk and to share our most vulnerable parts of ourselves with Jesus, we find our way home. Each time we share a part of ourselves with Jesus, we find our way home one step closer. So consider this. When was the last time you had a conversation with Jesus? In prayer, but a conversation where you shared your deepest hurts or vulnerable parts or struggles, secrets that maybe you've never told anybody else before. In the midst of grief, the unknown future, Jesus does not wag his finger at us and he doesn't say, get it together and put on your brave face. Get your game face on. We got business. Not at all. In fact, Jesus says just the opposite. He gives you and me permission to admit that we cannot control the things that trouble us. Instead, he invites us to find our comfort in connection, in a relationship with him. There's one commentator who reminds us that many of us in the year 2020 now identify as being able-bodied, and we may not have developed this, inter, this inner uh, resource that we need in order to deal with constant stress and health-related fear that inundates us like that during this crisis right now. And I'd like to share with you a few words that Dr. Erin Rafferty, uh, an intelligent woman who recently shared some of her resources that she has developed on social media. She's a pastor and she's the parent of one child. And this child has multiple disabilities and a terminal illness. And this is what she says. I've never been able to save my daughter. Lucia is her name. It's a truth I've had to come to grips with. When you live at the edge of your limits as a mother and a person, you get kind of comfortable there. You make a home and peace among those unanswerable whys. You realize to ask them is futile, faithless, distracting, daunting. The control that you don't have was never an idle to be worshipped, but rather a, tyrann a tyrannical robber of joy. There is truth, she says, and wisdom in many of these positions. We can't save ourselves. We can't prevent this virus. If we could, we would have done it by now. Instead, our lives are shot through with daily reminders of our vulnerability. Our naivety is gone. A few months ago, over Lucia's birthday, I flew unexpectedly to Wisconsin for a funeral of a dear family friend. Funerals are not really for the dying. They're for the living to do the work of grieving so they can gather the resources to go on living. That weekend, we were blessed to be together and reflect upon the life of a beautiful, faithful woman. Your mother was so good at loving people. I said to my friend, and is there really anything else? I began to wonder. This is something this week that keeps coming across my mind. Is there anything more important, more beautiful than a life that has been based on loving people and being good at it in whatever way we do? She continues and she says, grief and love are the twin conditions in which we 
had to make our home in these coronavirus days. To acknowledge the former, in light of isolation, suspended gatherings, especially funerals interrupted, doesn't always seem to help. In other words, it doesn't seem to help to know that what you're going through is grief these days. It just seems like it's all grief on top of grief. Grief all the way down. Indeed, I worry increasingly that our vigilance around social distancing, self-protection, and isolation in the face of fear so easily turns from care to coercion. Human beings are, have always clung to a logic around life and death that privileges healthy and able-bodied people because it makes most of us feel better than facing the unknown of death that we'll never be able to control. Even that logic won't really save us and it definitely won't save us from pain or from grief. The paradoxical antidote, though, is to be like my mother's friend, Charmin, in the face of life's cruelty, to be ridiculously committed to loving people. Ridiculously committed to loving people. The grief is that love never rescues anyone from death, of course, but it covers them and it nurtures them. It consumes them in a way that always and does matter completely, no matter what the economy is, no matter how many people are employed or unemployed. Love covers and nurtures completely. I think those are words that we must live by in these uncertain times. In these uncertain times, there's stresses of different kinds. And Dr. Erin Rafferty continues and writes that she and her husband don't always talk about it, um, don't talk about how it feels to live with the specter of death at their door. It freaks people out to talk about death, let alone the impending death of a child, but they find it important and comforting to be honest and open about the unknowns. She concludes by saying that she does not want to live with a false security that their child will always be there. Instead, she lives with the full knowledge of life's impermanency. And in the middle of that, they can choose to love even more fiercely, more generously, and more lavishly. Isn't that a beautiful lesson for us? In the midst of her loss, knowing that her child has a terminal illness and disabilities and still loves on their child lavishly. While it's true that we cannot save ourselves, we must remember that God who saves has been unleashed in the world as love incarnate, as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God has come to dwell among us and he invites us to abide, to live in him and trust in him. Wow. Love will conquer death and love will find a way. What will you do with your vulnerability when it comes bubbling up with trouble from your deepest parts of your being? Or maybe the floodgates swing wide open. Where will you go? Will you lean into Jesus? Will you let him embrace you tight and hold you against his bosom? God in the flesh, Yes, I encourage you to do just that. Will you tell him your secrets? Will you have a little talk with Jesus? Just a little talk with Jesus. And be honest. Tell him your
grief, your insecurities, so that Jesus can fill you with the true hope and deep love, so that he will fill your heart, even in the midst of any trouble. Trust him. Believe in him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Please enjoy this hymn written for mothers as a way to say thank you. Thank you to our moms. Before I was a mother, I thought I knew. I thought I knew what love looks like. I thought I knew the value of sleep. I thought I knew the sound of success. Before I was a mother, I thought I knew the beauty of a prayer, the potential of my joy, the length of my patience, I thought I knew the depth of art, the soul of laughter. As a mom, I thought I knew the stress, the worry, the beautiful torture of learning, the healing of peace. I thought I knew how to keep my head. This is the third time. Let's go. I thought I knew how to fix my parents' mistakes. I thought I knew how to be a cool mom. Before I was a mother, I thought I knew. But now I realize I had a lot to learn. And you were teaching me the whole time, even before I was aware of it. You were welcoming me into the sisterhood of mothers. A calling as old as love itself. Never grow out of being a mom. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Sorrow 
blessing and benediction. Dear friend, as you shift from worshiping with me and others in our churches and around the world uh, virtually, remember this, we may not be able to escape the plans of our enemies, but neither will we, we be able to escape the love of our God. We may not be able to escape the pain and suffering, but we can always take refuge in the one who is our rock and our mighty fortress. We may not know what the future holds, but we do know the one who holds the future. So now go in peace, knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal love of God and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you now and forevermore. Amen. Happy Mother's Day.